Welcome to Raji Pie for Beginners. Today we're going to be making a roll bud. Come and take a look. We're going to make a robot with the Canjum education kit. Let's see what's inside. Ooh. Be honest. What are we having here? So, what's that? Three. And a thingy. A thingy. What are these? Motors. Two motors. Another thingy. Another thingy. Well, we have a battery pack. You know, batteries are. We have a bearing, which is going to act as our front wheel. We have some wires. We have a couple of resistors in here as well. We have some sticky pads. What we have here is an ultrasonic sensor. Can you say ultrasonic sensor? And it tells you how far away things are. <laughs> are they nice and close or are they far away? Yeah. So, this is our motor controller board. What is this? A motor controller board. A motor controller board. Boom. Right. So, what are we missing, Will? A Raspberry Pi. And where are we going to get one from? The garage. And how many have we got? Lots. Lots. And lots. And lots. And right. Lots and lots and Let's lots. go get some. But before we do that, we need to build a frame that we're going to put the robot onto. So let's have a look in our shed and see what we've got. Hmm, I've got an idea. Here. This would be good. We're going to use this piece of wood, but you could just use the original box. We're only using the piece of wood because we've got a great idea. Hey, uh, yeah! Where could I find a Raspberry Pi in this place? Hmm. Oh, there's Dad's emergency one. Shh, don't tell him. Like we said, you could just use the original box. It's great because inside you've got the space to fit the pie and the battery packs and other bits and bobs. But we wanted to use something more rigid because we have a cool idea for later. Now we could just use the original roller ball. You just pop it out and screw it in from the other side using a nut and bolt. But as we're using a wooden frame, we wanted something a bit more heavy duty. So we're using one from an old project. Now, these are our motors. They have these little nubbins on the side and they normally go on the inside of the wheel. So make sure the wires are on the inside. We're just gonna stick them on here. If you're using the cardboard box, then you can just use these sticky pads. However, we're gonna stick ours on using a glue gun. So now the glue is set, we are good to go. Note, we can still access the batteries and the on off switch. Our basic car frame is finished. All we need to do now is secure the Raspberry Pi on top. We're going to use a few zip ties we have lying around. Next step is to connect the battery and the motor cables to the motor controller board. Make sure the red wire goes to the positive and the black to the negative for the battery pack. Later on, if your wheels spin the wrong way, flip the red and black cables for that specific motor. Then, plug in the motor controller board to your Pi as seen here. Lastly, we need to connect another battery pack to power the Pi. Note, the black battery pack powers the motors and the red on the Pi. Let's plug this in and prepare our software. You need to prepare your SD card. Go to the Raspberry Pi website, click Downloads, then download the new Imager software for Windows. Once downloaded, run and install. It's always best to prepare your SD card by erasing it first. Then, image your SD card with Raspberry. Once completed, plug in the SD card and boot your Pi as normal. Now it can be really helpful to set up wireless so that you can access your robot remotely and you don't have to plug in a keyboard, mouse and monitor. Once you've done that, open up a command prompt and run ifconfig and write down the IP address that you see on your wireless LAN adapter. Now to access this remotely, we're going to use a command prompt and we're going to use SSH. So make sure in your settings that your SSH service is enabled. Now we need to download a copy of the worksheets and the code from the CamJam Education Kit website, camjam.me. 
browse to the Cam Jam Education Kit 3, scroll down and then under Worksheets click on GPIO 0. If you go to the first worksheet and scroll down you will see what is called a GitHub link. With this we can download the worksheets and the code directly from a service called GitHub. So all we have to do is follow those two simple commands. So change directory into root and then run the GitHub command to download those files. Once that's downloaded, you can simply list your directory and you can see in there, there is a folder called EduKit3. You can also browse to this with a file explorer and you can see all of the workshops and all the different example code. Now I'm going to take a copy of the code I want to use, which is the GPIO0 code. And I'm going to create a folder called robot in the root directory for easy access to the code later. So create that directory and paste a copy of the code in there. That should make it a little bit easier to access the code from the command prompt. Now if we open up a command prompt, either via the desktop or via an SSH connection, we can see there there's the robot directory. So change into the robot directory. And then we're going to run Python and we're going to use the third example which will make our motors move forward. It's alive! Now the easiest way to edit this code is to load it up in Thorny, which is the IDE of choice for Python on the Pi. And again, we can run the code from here, but we can also, more importantly, edit it. Now earlier, we enabled SSH and took the IP address of our wireless LAN interface so that we could connect into it. Here, we're using an external application on our iPhone called Terminus to connect into the terminal and run this command as if we were connected directly to the Pi. Now we have the basic mechanisms of a robot working. This is the end of part one. In part two, we're going to connect up the breadboard, the line follower and the ultrasonic sensor. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.